George Bernard Shaw, Irish playwright, uh, he was famous for a quote about communication. Uh, that the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Communication is complex, which is an understatement. Uh, communication uh, is oftentimes assumed to be easy and to have happened because words have been exchanged and uh, it's really not that simple. So for this video, I wanna start building just the most basic foundation of the understanding of communication. I mean, entire uh, majors and degrees uh, at universities are dedicated to teaching communication, so we obviously can't get uh, that in depth in just a few minutes. Uh, but building the foundation to communication is essential, especially for those of us that work in the communication field interpreting. Uh, communication involves a lot of different things. Uh, it's very complicated, and again, we can't assume that just because words have been exchanged that meaning has been understood as it was intended uh, from the speaker. Uh, so, here's some basic elements of communication that uh, I'll talk about today. One, we generally do have, uh, or we obviously do have a speaker when communication is happening. Um, and speaker uh, can be applied to uh, verbal language or manual language as well. Um, and then we have a listener or sometimes we have listeners, multiple people. So communication can happen obviously one-to-one, -one. it can happen one to many people, it can happen several people to several people, several people to one person, and there's all these various combinations of communication. Uh, the more people that are involved in communication, the more complex it gets. Every person that you add, you add intention, you add a different schema, you, have, you add different cultural understanding, different background, etc. So it really can get more and more complicated the more people you have involved in a communication event. So some basic terminology I want to uh, talk about today. One, uh, I just mentioned the word schema. Uh, schema. Schema is a way of describing uh, what is happening in a listener's, or a speaker for that matter, what's happening in their mind as they're communicating. Um, what are they envisioning? Um, what background experiences do they have that relate to the topic at hand? For example, uh, if I were describing a trip that I took to Scotland, and I did take a trip to Scotland over the summer, if I were describing that, uh, to somebody who had never been, they would have uh, most likely a very uh, weak schema, meaning they wouldn't have the background information that they would need uh, to really understand the things I was describing. Conversely, let's say I'm describing that to somebody who was from Scotland or had, who had been to Scotland or had been to the places that I had been. They have a background uh, template from which they could draw um, my references, my communication. In doing so, uh, communication could be more clear because the schemas would align. Uh, so schema is important. Um, uh, you'll probably hear, you will hear schema talked about more in your interpreting journey uh, as you talk about meaning transfer work um, and to take that into consideration. Um, but just for now, understand that schema is basically what I just described. It's this way of mentally understanding or connecting pieces of information based on uh, one's prior experience. Another important term uh, related to communication is intention. Uh, so with communication you have a speaker and a listener, or multiple speakers, multiple listeners, as I've already said, uh, and then you have the intention of the speaker or speaker. So you have speakers who uh, want to communicate something uh, for a specific reason, um, and those reasons could be a million. Almost endless numbers, of, uh, almost endless numbers of reasons that somebody could be communicating. Um, maybe it's to gain popularity. Uh, maybe it's to just inform somebody. Uh, maybe it's to try to get somebody to do something that you are wanting them to do for some reason. Um, all, all different types of, of motivations or intentions for communication. Uh, we can falsely assume that the intention of the speaker is automatically understood by the listener. So the li so the listener is able to detect that intention readily and easily. That's not always the case. Uh, it might be the case that the, that the person communicating 
uh, has a certain intention that's not heard by the listener. So, I mean, we could think of just a, a very stereotypical maybe conversation between two spouses and uh, the intention of the initial start of the conversation uh, was to joke around or to kid their spouse, his or her spouse, uh, about uh, some event that had happened the day before, let's say. Well, the other, uh, the spouse then may interpret that communication as a jab uh, or something that, uh, you know, like a gotcha, you know, something negative, or, or they may take it seriously. Uh, if that's how they take that intention of the communication, that person's response is going to then be dictated by that understanding, which could be, a, if it is a wrong understanding, could lead to conflict or miscommunication. Uh, so this uh, element of communication is present in every communication event that happens. There's an intention of the speaker. <clears throat> Two more terms I want to I want to talk through before we talk briefly about mediated. And when I say we, I mean I, <laughs> to you. Uh, talk about mediated communication. I'll talk more about that in a second. But two more terms. One is context. Uh, context. So the context of communication is important. Um, is it happening in an occupational job setting? Is communication happening in the home? Uh, is it happening between people who know each other well? Is it happening between two people who don't know each other well? Uh, and uh, you know what are the ages of the people communicating? All of these things have to do with context, and context greatly impacts how communication happens, uh, how it's understood, how it's uh, you know how communication goes forward, um, how well people are able to understand each other. Um, context plays a big role, and then finally, uh, I want to mention culture. Uh, so we have people from a variety of backgrounds, ethnicities. Um, geographical distinctions, familial distinctions, and all of that uh, builds different cultural uh, expectation and understanding as it relates to communication. So uh, communication uh, for those who are culturally Japanese um, is very different than those who are culturally in that, uh, or from Italy, you know, Italians and, and, and Japanese. They have different ways of communication, right? We have stereotypes of these that sometimes are true, sometimes are not true. You know, like a loud, boisterous Italian, you know, dinner. You know, like everybody's talking at the same time. It's, okay, it's a stereotype, but you know, we understand that they're the basis of that. And then we have these Japanese norms of, you know, you know, maybe more quiet, you know, more clear turn taking, uh, less boisterous, less interrupting. You know, all these things. So those cultural elements. Uh, play very strongly into how people communicate. Well, for us with deaf and hearing uh, communities, uh, those cultural distinctions also very much matter when it comes to communication. Uh, <clears throat> so for example, um, it might be culturally norm, normed and, and uh, might be a tendency for um, a deaf individual to have extended goodbyes. Uh, so you know, you finish hanging out, you finish dinner, and People are about to leave, and there's these, you know, extended goodbyes. You know, adding information, and oh, and what about this? And then getting into other conversations. Again, it's general. It's somewhat of a stereotype, but generally true for deaf folks. That that's uh, uh, more more prone for a deaf a deaf individual than it would be for a hearing individual, um, who, you know, just culturally have we have quicker goodbyes. Once you start that process, it's kind of like okay and goodbye. You know, for the most part. Um, again, they're extenuating circumstances where that's not the case. Um, so the four um, terms I talked about today so far, uh, schema, intention, context, and culture, all very important when it comes to communication. <clears throat> and again, uh, as we move forward in this interpreting journey, we are um, working in the, in, the, in the zone of communication. That is what we're doing. We're helping to mediate communication, which mediation is you know, it's just another way of saying that we're involved in you know, the process of communication, that we are uh, facilitators of communication as interpreters. So for us to understand these basic tenets and basic elements of communication, it's really important um, because, uh, you know, again, it has very much to do with our work. Uh, it is our work as interpreters. Um, so uh, we're not going to get too deep into mediated uh, communication now, I just wanted to introduce the term to you, um, but as interpreters are working, we're considering 
um, all of these factors and many others uh, as we are facilitating that communication. So we're thinking about the speaker, the listener, what was the intention, what's the meaning, what's the context, what's the culture. And we are doing our best uh, to uh, decipher those things, to understand those things. But that may not be so easy, and it's not. We may uh, think that the speaker means one thing when they actually mean us something else, or that their intention is for this when it's actually for that. Uh, but we do our best to gather information, piece it all together, to create hypotheses of communication, of what's being said and why it's being said. And then we work on that hypothesis until there's something that indicates that that hypothesis is wrong. Is wrong. And then we change our hypothesis and then we move forward um, again trying to hopefully hone in on that uh, communication more and more and more precisely. So that's just a brief introduction to communication, some elements that impact communication, and how it uh, relates to interpreting. Uh, mediated communication, which is the work that we do.